Hi and welcome back to another video today. As I said, RTX 4070 Ti launch video. We are going to check out the Gigabyte Eagle, which is also sitting on my test bench right now. And this card, as you all probably know, the 4070 Ti was originally planned to launch as a 4080 with 12 gigabyte. And it's not only just 12 gigabyte versus the normal 16 gigabyte on a normal 4080, but also the fact that the 4070 Ti is using the AD104 chip, which is the smaller chip with less cores and thus also a different kind of performance. That's why there was a huge backlash when Nvidia launched the 4080, which is, yeah, expected. And that's why they rebranded it as 4070 Ti. And that's why we are here today to take a look at this card. And it's not only that it's using less amount of memory, but also less amount of memory chips, which is resulting in a different bus width. So for example, on a 4080 with 16 gigabyte, you have eight chips with 32 bit each. So a total of 256 bit connections. And on the 4070 Ti, you have six chips. So that's a total of 192 bit connections basically the traces that are going from the GPU to the memory. So it's not only relevant how much memory you have, but also how many chips you can access in parallel in total, because this will give you a higher performance, a better performance or access to your data on the memory. And that's why specifically this card will have a different kind of performance rating if you look at, let's say, 4K or like 1440p. From the feedback I got from my YouTube colleagues, I saw that obviously in 4K, the penalty of the bandwidth or bus width is definitely higher than in 1440p. I originally wanted to have both resolutions in today's video, but with all the testing of the AMD cards in the previous two weeks, I just didn't have time to finish all of this. So we're just going to look at 4K, which is the like the worst scenario for the card. So whenever you are planning to get this for 1440p, then like the performance benefit over like a 3080 or a 3090 would be higher. So as long as we're looking at the worst scenario from my point of view, at least this would be fine. But obviously all the other YouTubers like Emerson Nexus and whoever are going to cover this anyway. So should be fine from what I can tell. As usual, for a first estimate, we're looking into 3 d Mark times by Extreme GT1, which is just GPU bound and not really CPU bound. The 4070 Ti scores about 70 FPS and will slightly beat a 3090 Ti and also the RX 6950 XT. Times by Extreme GT1 is using 4K resolution, but at the same time, it's not using that much memory. That's why we probably see these kind of results. Continuing with Cyberpunk 2077, and you can see both DLSS performance and non-DLSS results. Yellow marked, you can see the charts with average FPS and a little bit darker yellow, you can see the 1% low, AKA minimum FPS. In addition, in blue, you can find the power consumption of each card. The RTX 4070 Ti, both in DLSS and also without DLSS, is pretty much on par with the RTX 3090 Ti, but at the same time only consumes about 220 watt, which is about half of a 3090 Ti. Without DLSS, as expected, Cyberpunk is completely unplayable, but with performance, you can reach about 60 to 70 FPS, which is in the region that it starts being enjoyable. And also compared to an RTX 3080 Ti, the RTX 4080 Ti will beat it slightly. The 4070 Ti is on average 10 to 12% faster while consuming 30% less power. It's getting more interesting looking at the FPS per watt chart. And the 4070 Ti benefits from the smaller chip, which is consuming less power than the bigger cards. And it can even beat the RTX 4090, at least when we're looking at efficiency, thus FPS per watt. In this case, 0.102 FPS per watt. Lowering the power target to 70%, further allows to increase the efficiency and we can reach 0.13 FPS per watt, but we will get to this in more detail in a second. In Remnant from the Ashes, again in 4K, the RDX 4070 Ti will be on par with a 3080 Ti, but at the same time as before, we are consuming 30% less power. 
If we lower the power target in Remnant from the Ashes to 70%, we lose about 10% of performance, but at the same time we are further decreasing power to only about 170 watt, and for these days that's definitely a very enjoyable region. This allows the RTX 4070 Ti in my FPS per watt chart to be on top, and it can even beat a 4090 or a 4080, and they're also just running at 70% power target. Comparing the 4070 Ti to the 3080 Ti or 3090 Ti, the 4070 Ti will be twice as efficient. In PUBG I noticed that the 4070 Ti falls behind a 3080 Ti. It's not really noticeable I think, at least when it comes to the FPS, but you can probably notice the lower power consumption, which is about 20% lower, and at least on your build you might notice this. At this point and with 4K resolution in PUBG it might be the bus width that is limiting the 4070 Ti performance. But if your focus is more on the power consumption you can probably have a bit more fun with this card and especially at 70% power target and still having 200 FPS in PUBG I think this card is delivering acceptable results even though it's on the last rank in this chart. But if we switch over to FPS per watt in PUBG, the 4070 Ti with 70% power target can still be ranked second. Even though Battlefield 2042 might not be the most liked game out there, I personally enjoy it for benchmarking because it is delivering very consistent results. But when I tried to use it, which is what I usually do for my reviews, then I was greeted with this error message. And after trying it like three or four times and also like a different setup, then I got in contact with Nvidia and they confirmed that there is currently an issue with the review driver and Battlefield 2042. They are aware of it, but it's the reason why I cannot deliver these results today but they are working on this so I would expect then that on the retail driver this should be fixed. With the entire topic around the smaller bus width of 192 bit you could ask yourself the question if memory overclocking could help to support the 4070 Ti's performance in 4K. I checked this for example in Times by Extreme and overclocking from 1300 to 1525 megahertz we could only see an increase of 2.6 percent. In Cyberpunk at least in theory you could increase the performance by 5 to 10 percent but that's only because the FPS are so low in general and honestly speaking an increase from 20 to 21 FPS could as well just be measurement tolerance. And also in Remnant from the Ashes we can only see an increase of 4% due to memory overclocking and thus I would not consider this to be helpful to compensate the smaller bus width. Now also to talk about the Eagle card from Gigabyte specifically, I was actually quite satisfied with how the card performs. The temperatures are great with the performance BIOS with about 55 degrees Celsius under load. And this is due to the rather high fan speed of 1700 RPM, which is causing the card to have a noise level measured of about 44 decibel, which is, I would say, completely unnecessary because the card is clocking at 2850 MHz with the performance BIOS. If you switch to the silent BIOS, you are decreasing the GPU clock by 15 MHz, which is something there is like no way you will ever notice this. The temperature is slightly increasing to 60 degrees Celsius, which is like on a technical level still absolutely fine, but you are decreasing the fan speed by about 300 RPM. And then with about 40 dBA the card is definitely more enjoyable. But apart from that, quite nice card, almost no coil wine, at least in the region from about 50 to 150 FPS, almost not noticeable. Only if you go above that, let's say 200 to 400 FPS, that's what I had with PUBG testing, you can hear it slightly, but it's still in an acceptable region at least from my subjective side. As usual though, very difficult to give recommendations on purchase. I would even say it's impossible simply because of the availability and pricing in different regions. It might be 799 in the US, then it might be 899 in the EU or in Germany, and that's only MSRP, then it might be completely different in the real world scenario when it's available. So yeah, quite hard to tell. If it was, I would say between 800 and 900, I guess the performance is acceptable for the price. But above that, and I fear that's what we are seeing on the market, it's going to be not nice. But yeah, that will just depend too much on the region and also availability for me to really have a word on. So yeah, sorry for not delivering again the 1440p results, but yeah, just didn't have enough time. 
Thanks for tuning in to next time. Bye bye.